What's your life goal? And have you achieved it? Yeah, I married you. Aw, gross. You really need to go out there and make sure the whole world hates you. My butthole is all over the internet. A fine wine. She keeps me in the basement and pulls me out when she needs me. If I drink Sambuca, he's getting it. I bought a case. You can tell a lot about a person by the way their tits, pussy, or dick looks. You come near my cheeks and it's not going to be a good day for you, homie. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be special. Welcome to the Two Onions Podcast with Danny Daniels and Vic. What's up, guys? I'm Danny Daniels. Next to me in the bright orange shirt is my husband, Vic. And with us today in his teenage dream house, <laughs> one of my good friends, and I think you're honestly the funniest person in porn, Mike mm. Quasar is here. It's a low bar, just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're one of the funniest persons not in porn either. So and I'm talented, yeah. talented too, higher, but that's entertaining on Twitter is number one for me. <laughs> Sure. Well, I have a drinking problem, as you know, so. <laughs> I don't know. If, the, if that's the know, result it's... of your problem, it's not a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad the demise of my liver provides you hours of amusement. Always. No, you have no idea. <laughs> we will literally scream your tweets across the room like, did you see what he said today? <laughs> I do think you should publish them at some point. Maybe I'll make a coffee table book when I'm dead or something. They can, uh, they can, they can do it posthumously. That, that guy did shit my dad says, and your stuff's a lot funnier than his was, so it'd be shit Mike said. <laughs> well, yeah, again, uh, again, it could be a coffee table book. I, uh, I don't have anything to leave to my daughter, so that could generate some much needed money after I'm in the ground. Wait a minute, in the ground? I, uh, I'm sure I'll be cremated. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't know you had a daughter. Where yeah, is- yeah. Uh, she's um, pretty old. Oh, okay. There's got to be some irony like, in this somewhere. What? what? <laughs> Well, no, the irony is that she's my stepdaughter. Um, and the irony, of course, being that I am now forced as part of my career choice to make yeah. nothing but step pornography, which <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with to begin with. And because of that situation, I'm even more uncomfortable than the average pornographer, so. I literally yeah. wrote that down. I was like, ask Mike how he feels about step porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, perhaps we could make this a two-part series or something like that. I. <laughs> We could just do that for the first part, oh yeah. <laughs> so I got, so I got to ask. We we need. I need the Mike Quasar origin story. How the fuck did this happen to you? <laughs> well, I've uh, I've told it before. It's a sad tale, but uh, I'll I'll try and encapsulate it for you so that um, I'll just try and hit the highlights. There's only two highlights. So uh, I left Canada when I was 20 with the guys in my band. And we drove to LA. Is this the is this and, the uh, same band that you're in now, or a different band? No, 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 no. Okay, a long time ago, uh, as I like to say, back when I had hopes and dreams. Um, so we uh, we moved to LA, and um, and uh, you know we were together for about three years, and things didn't work out. And then, uh, completely by chance, uh, I stumbled into this business because a friend of mine who's also in the industry. Um, met a stripper back in Toronto who said, if you ever come to LA, uh, give us a call. So we were in LA and we lived in my van for about two weeks. And then it was like, uh, hey, maybe we should call that stripper, you know? And uh, <laughs> and we did. And that was it. Then, then it was like, okay, um, I guess, you know, we. I didn't know anything about the industry. I didn't know anything about camera or anything, obviously, but um, I knew how to hand out lube. That's not that hard, right? So <laughs> you started as a okay, lube boy. A little, uh, Wait, did you start you know, as a lube, lube boy? And, and uh, oh, here you need a towel, sir. I that was a very hefty ejaculate you just projected. You might want to <laughs> mop up that perspiration. I'm here for you. Uh, and you decided and then, to keep going further in the industry after that. <laughs> right, well, here's the thing, right? So I learned early on that uh, it's not that hard to get ahead in this business because uh, a lot of people aren't smart. So you just have to be a little bit smarter. If you're that much smarter than the next guy, you're on the next level, you know? So, um, so the, the one highlight was, uh, was coming to LA. Uh, I guess the second highlight was, was that, uh, you know, happenstance ending up on a porn set when I was again, 20 years old. Uh, there are no more highlights. Everything's been a complete fucking disaster since then. So (laughs) if being the lube boy was the highlight, (laughs) Good. It does not bode well for the rest of this. No, no, no. You know, people are like, oh man, you're a successful porn director. You must be proud of yourself. I'm like, well, let's see. Let's go back to the origins. 
I was 20, I was going to be a famous rock star. I was going to write a memoir one day. I was going to have songs on the radio. I was going to have thousands, millions of dollars. And I was going to have a, a, a guilt-free, promiscuous sex with groupies who would throw themselves at me. And uh, I, that was the goal, right? So now <laughs> let's fast forward to 30 years later, last week, uh, because of the state of pornography, uh, even though I'm the important director guy, I still handed a guy a towel after he jizzed on some girl's face. <laughs> so when you connect- Life comes glass, full circle. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, you might understand why I'm enjoying a tall glass of Bethany Frankel's Skinny Girl Margarita. So- uh, <laughs> uh, Ah, I like it. Shameless plug, Bethany, you owe us a check. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's zero. awesome. Wait, hey, listen though, you do have a song out. I mean, I heard the little Q. Oh, little Q is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work, uh, I'm trying to talk him into doing track number two. You can't just put gem like that out into the universe and just leave it, you know? Oh, no, no you need a B-side. You gotta have no, a B-side. No, B-side, and, uh, and uh, I'm thinking, I've actually started working on it. Uh, that one uh, was written during a time when I thought I would never work in porn ever again. So I was a little bit nostalgic and, and, and uh, perhaps a, a little bit mentally uh, unstable at the time as well. So if I do a new one, I am going to call it, I just want to go home. That's what the new <laughs> one is called. I just have to come up with the actual descriptive lyrics that I can rapid fire like that one. And, and that'll be my new, my new hit single. <laughs> I, I did always admire you because I could just, I would be done by noon and it was amazing. Mm, yeah. yeah. When I you, can when make you, the bank today. When you, when you don't enjoy your vocation, you really try hard to get out as quickly as you can, you know? <laughs> just and, and the great thing, like if you work uh, in a warehouse or I don't know, at a fucking train station or something, uh, you know, you have a boss and you have to punch a clock and then you, ha you have to work those eight hours, right? So, uh, uh, I don't have to do that. I can be like, okay, we're closing in on hour number six. I'm getting a little antsy. Let's wrap this up, folks. All right. <laughs> yes, you're the stepdaughter. You're the stepfather. You're creepy as fuck. Uh, all right, ejaculate. Let's go. That's what I like to do. <laughs> Are you doing like mostly step porn now? All I do. It's a fucking oh, nightmare. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Lucky no. you. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, there was a. I mean, I was. I had. I had a wonderful balance. Well, not really a balance, but. Let's just say that I was uh, directing movies for Wicked Pictures, which they gave me the freedom to just write a movie, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit creative and a little bit liberating. Um, I didn't, you know, I got to do something like that about every six weeks. Um, and uh, I don't know what's going on with them, if they're going back into production or not, but um, Zero Tolerance certainly did. And though I appreciate them from the bottom of my heart, they've been my employer uh, for 20 years, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, that's the thing. It's like, well, step porn selling, keep making it. I'm like, all righty then. <laughs> yeah. How are we going to put a spin on it this time? Oh my God. I, I, daddy, I mean, we're not blood related, but daddy, I saw you spying on me through the crack in the door. I accidentally left when I was showering and soaping myself up in slow motion as I often do, you know? Uh, and instead of calling the police, why don't I just suck your dick? <laughs> instead of calling the police, I've decided that I've always been attracted to you and I should invite you into the bathroom uh, and you should also uh, enjoy soaping me up. I, uh, yeah, it's it's terrifying. Uh, it's honestly that. frightening that, that it sells as well as it does, in my opinion. I don't even know if it sells because it's oh. like a self-perpetuating thing. You know, it's like, if that's all there is, you know, like, right. that's all there is. Yeah, yeah, right. If you're looking for porn and all you can find is step porn, that's what you get. Yeah, I mean, yeah. volume if, off, if penis in vagina or butt. Well, it's like, it's like a lot of people, you know, like most people for 90% of the population, Domino's is just fine for pizza. You know what I mean? 10% yeah. are like, wait, I want something better than Domino's. But 90% are like, yep, that's a step brother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Oh okay, 30 God. minutes where it's free. Ah! <laughs> Jerking off. Oh, 30 minutes, you're, you're well overestimating their ability. <laughs> Forget about it. 30, in my case, it's 30 seconds where it's free, but that's another story. <laughs> I do, like, you are my favorite director to shoot for, though, because it would literally be, like, if it was, like, like Adrian called me and go, you can shoot for so-and-so or Quasar, like, Quasar, because I know I can show up, wear whatever the fuck, do whatever the fuck, get yeah, cream yeah. pie, and go home in two hours. Yeah. <laughs> two hours or less. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. It's like, 
every time a new girl shows up on set and she's like, well, what do you want me to wear? I'm like, I don't know, dress like a stepdaughter. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I'm like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I mean, it's all the same. Just put on a pair of shorts and a top and some shoes and let's take a picture and bone this dude you just met. You know? <laughs> Uh, you know it's funny we did we did dinner with danny you were by far the most talked about director in 10 episodes yeah by far, it wasn't even close yeah and all fondly no one ever said a bad word of the other directors didn't fare so well but you by far almost every episode you were mentioned well that's that's very flattering i uh I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that i i mean it's not because i'm a good director it's again it's just because i want to go home yeah. <laughs> hence the <laughs> Though I don't know, Julia Ann said you were a great director, so. Uh, she's just a really good friend of mine who said something nice. <laughs> you know, like, your your dad always tells you you did great out there on the field, even though you fucked everything up and the team lost. You know what I mean? You had a different dad than oh, I did. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Italian fathers are like, fuck you. You've, you've ruined oh, yeah, the family reputation. Yeah. Time to go home. <laughs> Truthfully, my father was an abusive alcoholic. <laughs> the apple doesn't fall far from the tree on that one. <laughs> did you ever perform? God, no. Can you imagine <laughs> such a thing? I didn't Whoa. know. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Cool. Did you ever? Did, did you ever want? I mean, I've seen Stephen King films that are uh, are, are less scary than that uh, idea. <laughs> I know you've been behind a lot of dudes, but I didn't know if you were actually like one of ever did like a POV thing or something. No, it's uh, it, it was uh, it was not something I was even ever tempted to do. I I know what my skill set is, and it isn't that. So <laughs> you know. And, you know, I, I, I know you you say you're not a good director, but I saw the the Holly podcast with you and Francois. All right. You guys, you guys were talking the game. I mean, you, you know what you're doing. Well, I've been doing it for fucking almost 30 years. So if I haven't learned something by now, then I'm not nearly as smart as I indicated earlier when I said you have to be that much smarter. You know, <laughs> Kara, a uh, uh, friend of mine, Cherie Deville, and I have this running joke where all you have to do to be a good performer is show up on time, bring clean clothing, and be happy to be there. That's it. <laughs> literally it and you know the strange thing is since you know this whole covid shutdown and we didn't shoot for a long time um everybody that's showing up on set now it's been the most wonderful experience like of my entire years of shooting because everybody literally wants to be there you know um and you know a lot of people during the the downtime had some less than flattering things to say on twitter about a lot of you know people in the industry and it's like okay so you know, it's like, I understand you make a lot of money on OnlyFans and good for you. Um, and I wish you continued success. But when you start saying things like, we need to boycott those mainstream producers, you know, we don't need those studios anymore. You know, fuck the, I'm like, well, maybe one day you will, but now you won't have the opportunity. So go fuck yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, exactly. Like I always say, I'm like, I'm so thankful for mainstream porn because I wouldn't have a successful OnlyFans without it. <laughs> well, again, I mean, it's, it's no. like- Mainstream porn is basically your commercial for you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, look, some girls, uh, you know, maybe you're, have been able to, to do a lot without being in mainstream porn, but there's few and far between. Most people have to, you know, be seen. And the way you get seen is you do a bunch of scenes for people like me. Yeah. And then you become popular and then you can tell someone like me to go fuck myself. And that's totally fine. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just, you know. Be nice on your way out because if the if only exactly. fan shuts down and you got to pick make your rent, you're gonna bite the hand that feeds you. It's not gonna end well for you. I mean, I, I mean, Cherie Deville is a perfect example. I mean, she is such a wonderful human being. She makes, I know, she makes so much money, but she's like, you know, I mean, I know she doesn't particularly feel safe about the way things are right now um, with the testing and everything and pass and all that nonsense. But I mean, she's, you know, she's like, she gets it. You know, she's like, I'm not gonna just. Dis- Tell everybody to go fuck themselves just because I'm I'm successful because I'm gonna need to put my toe back in that pond every once in a while. Yeah, or even that. just like staying relevant, you know, right. like coming out with a new scene every six months or month or whatever you want to do just to like keep your relevancy up. I mean, it's right. not you know, but uh, again, no, but I, just I, a little I, bit I, smarter. I, right? No, a little bit smarter. Right? <laughs> I would say I wish I wish uh, I wish I had a vagina, but uh, I don't. So uh, I got no I got no game on OnlyFans, unfortunately. If you had a, okay, not that you, if you had a vagina, if a girl came to you and was like, I have a pussy, I want to do porn, like, what would be your advice for success? Well, my immediate advice would be, please, please reconsider your decision because (laughs) you're you're making it, 
you're making a terrible mistake. That would be my immediate thing. But uh, if she persisted um, with this insane, you know, idea, I would say uh, just that. Bring clean clothes, be happy, show up on time and be happy to be there. I mean, that's it, you know? There are lots of people that, you know, look, when you work for like MindGeek or some, or, or Gamma or some of the, you know, like algorithm driven um, uh, places that, you know, you, you don't often get a say in who you hire, right? Um, and thankfully I can hire whoever the fuck I want. They don't give me uh, a hard time about that. So, you know, there's like tons of new girls now that, um, have maybe only been in the industry of like, there's a couple that I've shot that have only been in the industry since like right before COVID they like did one or two scenes and then everything shut down. Oh, shit. And, and so, and they're, a lot of them are absolutely wonderful. You know I mean? They, they get it and they're happy to be there and they know that, you know, this is, you know, a, a stepping stone to whatever. I mean, everybody has their goal to be Danny Daniels or to be Cherie DeVille or to be, you know, uh, Riley Reed or something like that. And they, and they understand the process, you know? Um, and they've been very pleasant to be around, which I, that was not the case before coronavirus all the yeah. time. <laughs> I'm so surprised because if I had a guess, I would guess that the, the performers that came back were the ones that were like, I hate to say this, but like desperate for money. Yeah. You, you, that didn't like want to sit home and hustle. Like I'm surprised. Like everyone came back. Like that. That makes me gives me a little faith in the industry. Where like people actually. Well, not not a lot of people came back, um, but the ones that did again are you know I I, I mean I I'm not going to name any names because that's their own private business. But I know some of the people that came back don't need the money. Yeah. Obviously, they just came back because they want to be visible. You know, they understand it, right? So, um, you know, it's funny because they they used to be. <laughs> Um, again, when the, the shutdown was going on and everything and people were, you know, shit talking all about Twitter, it's like, you know, we, we need to stop making these people millionaires and, you know, the, the powers that, you know, we have the power now we have, and I'm sitting here going fucking millionaire. I live in a fucking condo, you know, like who's, who's the millionaire. Yeah, I mean, girls, you are making more money now than any time in the history of this industry. Like people talk nah. about the golden era and like Jenna James and all the Jenna James didn't make shit compared to what girls are making now. Yeah. So, yeah. so stop thinking you're making people like me rich. You're not, <laughs> you know, you're fucking not. <laughs> I wish you were. I wish I was just lying. This is all a front, but uh, if you the want- back, uh, The wall falls down, you're like a golden exactly. palace. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, wait, I just realized my EVN Hall of Fame trophy is right there. <laughs> that and $11 will get you a bottle of Skinny Girl Margarita, just letting you know. <laughs> When did they finally give you that uh, Hall of Fame trophy? Yeah, because wait a minute. Uh, I, didn't even, I didn't even, um, actually, Mark Spiegler, I think, uh, was the one that basically told them, you got you to gotta give Quasar your Hall of Fame. He's been around longer than fucking AVN almost. So it was like 2013. 2013? Yeah. So 2013, I'd already been in the industry for 21 years. But yeah, I've been in the Hall of Fame 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was a really good Spiegler impression, by the way. That yeah, was that like was, 10 that out was, of 10. That was pretty For those dead listening on. that have no idea what we're talking about, he is a prominent agent in pornos. Yes. Listen, talking? I got a new girl just came in from uh, Belarus. She don't do anal yet, but I'm talking her into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Having spoke to him oh on the God. phone yet, that's about right. Yeah. I love him. He is like, when you when you think of a porn agent, it oh is my God, Spiegler. Yeah. Like, that yes. is... They called Central Casting and they sent Spiegel over yeah. and said, we got a porn agent for you. <laughs> He's the, I mean, other than, you know, uh, you're too, you're, it was before your era, but other than Jim South, Spiegler is by far the, the greatest porn agent of all time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, I had to call him to get uh, some some of the girls on dinner with Danny. That was a fun conversation. <laughs> I like forewarned him. I'm like, prepare yourself <laughs> for calling Spiegel. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I it can only be there for 24 hours. I was like, okay. Right, right. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's it, because I gotta get back to that call time, 10 o'clock, Canoga Park. Plus, she got an anal prep, so don't give her too much of that Danny's dinner, all right? <laughs> <laughs> this is oh almost like the exact conversation, literally. Right. So, what's happening oh. now? Are you like having to test? Because you're it's like, because you're shooting, are you having to test every day? Or what? Almost every day, yeah. Are they doing like the brain jab? No, they do a oh, thank God. Um, which. You know, I mean, there's an inside joke. I mean, we're, you know, I mean, people are, I, again, that was the other thing that I was worried about. I'm like, these people used to forget to test every two weeks for their regular panel. How the fuck are yeah. they going to remember that, you know? But so far, I haven't had one person 
not uh, test in time for a scene. Oh, wow. Um, which is, again, a testament to the people that are here want to be here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's kind of a running joke. It's like, you know, because you go in and they make you stick your tongue out and they swab the back of your throat. It takes like a split second. They're like, okay, your results will be back tomorrow. It's like, did you really do anything? <laughs> I feel like you just have a like a, a stack of like negative forms. You just go, yep, yeah. negative, negative, you know? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? <laughs> so far, I still have my taste and smell, so I think they're accurate. I don't know. You're okay. You're the, you could be, Wait you could a minute, be though. So now you're officially in the pool of people that can bitch about having to pay for testing. Well, that's correct. That's correct. But I, I, I reimburse everybody for their COVID test. Um, but I and I, I have to pay for my own. But I, I just pad the budget. It's no big deal. Uh, <laughs> Do you think I afford all this luxury? I've been budget yeah. padding. I mean, forget about it. I mean, that that furniture in the background looks exclusive and expensive. You have any idea? This came from Home Goods. This was one hundred and twelve dollars. I'll have you know. <laughs> He's like, I used it in a movie, and then I just kept it. <laughs> it's just exactly. I'm like, uh, you guys gonna throw this out? Because I'll uh, put it in the back of my car anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> Perfect. I love you so much. I miss you. Oh my God. Yeah, I've seen you well, since whenever it was, ABN, like two years ago or whatever it was. Yeah. We all had dinner with Joanna and um, yep. was Aaron there? Yeah. yeah. I think Aaron came in a yep. little bit later. Oh my God. So, okay. What's your new band? What's going on with uh, this? Have you always been in this band? Am I what? Have you always been in the Cox? No, the Cox is, um, I've been in the Cox about three years. It's a, it's a strange thing. Um, a friend of a friend that, uh, well, actually a, a friend of mine that I, I knew way back in Canada when I was like 15, 16 years old, ended up moving to LA, married this guitar player who was in a bunch of different bands that Vic might know, you probably don't. Um, Cause you know, <laughs> he's different. I knew, who, uh, I knew he was behind you. you. Gotta give me a little see? bit. Anyway, they're like, uh, you know, my, are you still playing drums? My, uh, my husband, uh, plays guitar in this band called the Cox. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I just can't get away from pornography. Your band's called the fucking Cox? <laughs> oh, that's bad. I actually thought you named the band. I thought you <laughs> I oh, like, a bunch God, of, like, directors so... get together and start a... No, 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 no. And, uh, and, and I'm like, well, what's this band all about? And they're like, well, they're a gay punk band. And I'm like, what do you mean they're a gay punk band? Like, they're happy? No, 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 they're gay. Like, none of the members in the band are gay except the singer, um, Jay. He's awesome. Um, but literally every single song we do celebrates very dangerous, promiscuous homosexual activity. So, you know, we have songs called uh, It's Better Being Gay, I Love Dick, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Safe Word, uh, Spit Out Those Nuts, um, Hate oh. Load. I'm trying to think of some more, but off the top of my head, that's it, you know? Oh, God. The no, album's got to be awesome. So these are not the groupies you were hoping for. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, we play in a lot of gay bars where people automatically just assume, well, you play in this band, so you must be up for a little rub and tug. I'm like, no, no, no I'm good. I'm, I like the ladies. I, I do. I just, I truly, I, I, do this, I do this for fun. Not, the, not this for fun. I, I play drums for fun. I, uh... You know, oh god, I've, I've heard I, Aaron, I've heard Aaron has sat in with you guys a couple times yeah, he, too. He did. He did a gig with us once because our uh, our bass player was uh, he works in the film the actual film business, so he's on location and um, and uh, so Aaron, yeah, Aaron learned all the songs and and played a gig with us. It was it was amazing. Aww. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a good musician too. So, and I've seen I, you, man. Yeah. You can hit the skins pretty hard. He's like me in terms of like. I mean, obviously he's much better looking and has a much larger penis, but he's very much like me in other ways um, because he uh, also wanted to be a musician and um, somehow got in, got stuck in the porn business. Now, his part of it is a lot more fun than my part. Well, of it. that was kind of because like Joanna threw him to the wolves. Yeah. Well, Joanna had no shame, no mercy. Yeah. She came on the podcast and she was like, no, basically like I told him he had to perform for me. And yeah. Then yeah. If you, if you ever want to laugh your ass off, watch the Dinner with Danny, the guy's episode, and have him basically describe how he didn't want to do it, and she told him, you're a fucking asshole. I'm telling you you can fuck other women. You better do this. And he went, okay. Well, I was there. I remember it when he did his first scene. You did his first scene? <laughs> I, I No, because he was so nervous that Joanna was like, well, okay, what if we make it a POV thing? So I had to hand Aaron my camera, show him how to use it a little bit. I put everything on automatic as much as I could. Oh, and no. then, 
we were shooting obviously something for Burning Angel and they went into like this RV. It was supposed to be, um, it was a really funny movie. I can't remember what it was called, but it was Joanna and Tommy Pistol trying to go to uh, Coachella and all their adventures along the way that weren't, you know, every place they would go, they're like, oh, this isn't Coachella, you know, and then whatever. So uh, yeah, Aaron did his first scene in an RV uh, in a parking lot in a loft downtown holding the camera himself. And we just all left and we're just like, Fingers crossed, <laughs> he's either gonna do well uh, and we'll get out of here or he's not and we'll be here all night. So uh, he did fine. We left it a, in a timely fashion, so. And my understanding was it was all on a deferred compensation basis. It yeah, was like... that's what he was saying is that he didn't know. And he... Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still being deferred for him. <laughs> you know? The compensation was he got Joanna. That was well, the compensation. Fair yeah. compensation in my opinion. <laughs> that was, again, that's kind of where it was, you know, um, you know, I'm not an important porn director, but I shoot a lot of pornography. So it was, it was great that I was able to put Aaron in all of his first scenes, you know, like, because no one told me I couldn't. So I'm just like, okay, you're, yeah. you know, I, I like Aaron's whole first year, probably 90% of it was working for me, you know, and then we'll great. Get out and, and now look at him, you know, uh, <laughs> he's like, you're still, still, like, Interning for Quasar, and then he right. just like well, sent like, him like a baby you know, bird. Joanna, no. Joanna was the one that told him, like, basically, you're gonna do gang bangs, you're gonna do blow bangs, you're gonna do old people, you're gonna do fat people, you're gonna do fucking, you know, inanimate objects, you're gonna do whatever I tell you to do, because that's what you have to do to be a performer, you know? Um, you know, none of this coddling stuff where you get to like only mm -hmm. work with the girls you have a vibe with, and you know, all that shit. It's like, you know, you're a fucking, you're a meat stick, get in there and fuck something, you know? And she was very merciless about it. And I, I had, I put him with a couple of girls over that first year that I'm just like, I'm so sorry. You're like, this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one to break yeah. him. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, we, uh, on, the, on the TV show, he talked about how he was like having to ax his way through a door while a dog was biting his leg uh, in some was scene. Was that for you? <laughs> It wasn't for me, but I heard the story, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, like that, like, that, that and, and he did a clown prison gangbang with a mask and wound up with pink eye. It's like... Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Do, do so much. He had to do something for me again. I won't, I won't mention the lady's name because she's wonderful. It's just that she's getting on in years. Um, <laughs> and so it was a gangbang with, with a, a, much, a much older woman. Like, we're out of the MILF territory. We're into whatever the next category is, right? MILF. And... Uh, <laughs> All I can tell you is it was the quietest gangbang I've ever shot. <laughs> like, everybody was, like, because she was so much older, it was trying to be like, so, are you okay? <laughs> like, do I need to help you across the street? Oh, <laughs> no! Are you going to throw out a hip? Is that like... Uh... Yeah, and I remember Aaron was part of that. And I at one point, he came to me, he's like, he goes, she's really sweet, but I have to go to such a dark place to get through this. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. You have no idea what kind of darkness I'm in shooting it. Don't worry about it. Oh my God. <laughs> I haven't figured out how to shoot with my eyes closed yet. I know. I was, I was just, again, just switch everything on auto and hope for the best. Ah, ah. Oh, oh, you got to get a CNI director, just somebody over your shoulder so you can keep your eyes. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Do not take this blindfold off until she says it's over. Uh, oh, the, the stories about I me mean, being being coming in from the outside. The stories, just I love them. Oh, yeah, well, there's a lot of them, that's for sure. What's the most difficult scene for you to shoot? Uh, well, difficult in terms of um, uh, difficult emotionally for me. <laughs> the most difficult scenes to shoot, honestly, are girl girl scenes because, as you know, you were a girl girl performer for a very long time. Um, if there is no chemistry in a girl girl scene, it is the most painful thing you can ever possibly be a witness to. Like I'm almost, I, I almost think that it would be, it would be less tragic to watch a litter of puppies be mowed down by a transport truck. It's like, Oh my God, what am I witnessing? Yeah. Like, and I can't make it better. Like, I don't care how good of a director or somebody says they are or whatever. It's like, if in particularly in girl girl settings, you cannot make it better. Mm -mm. And like, if you have two girls that are not into each other, like, five, like you need if you need forty five minutes or whatever it is, like five minutes will go by. They'll be like, so we're done, right? Exactly, exactly. Oh no, I'm like, no, actually, I uh, I was just white balancing the camera. Please continue. I, uh... 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I actually, like, I totally agree. It's like, because at least if you're working with a guy and the girl's not necessarily into him, she can just bend over and just, like, space yeah, out. She, got, she can fake moan and go to another yeah. place. She can be, you know, uh, planning, you know, her next Amazon wish list in her head. There's a guy... <laughs> The guy's still gonna be in there going, ah, I don't, you know, I don't yeah. care, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But a girl going like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just tongue poking a girl on the yeah, pussy yeah. For, for, oh man. Or, or the other thing that's my favorite thing is they touch the vagina with their mouth for a nanosecond, and then they immediately go, "Do you like that? Do you like that? Do you like that? Like, what the? What, what's going on here? What's this? <laughs> Dialing in radio for Europe or something. Exactly. This is a ham radio? Are you trying to fucking talk to North Korea? What the fuck is going on? The fucking vagina. You have one. You know that doesn't feel good. I feel like they, I feel like the girls are just like hate fucking the other one sometimes when they do that. Yeah, I've seen that happen. I've like they're happen pissed off, so they're like jamming the dildo and then I'm like, uh, okay. They're <laughs> You know who I've seen that do that is uh, Francesca Lay when, when she was performing for other people. I've seen her snap a couple times ago. All right, I'm just going to destroy this bitch. I'm like, do what you got to do. I'll be back here. <laughs> Witnessing. I'll be the witness. <laughs> exactly. What's the hardest to shoot directorially, yeah. not emotionally? Like, what's the... Uh, directorially, um, nothing's hard to shoot. It's fucking by the numbers at this point, you know? Like, really, there's nothing hard to shoot. The hardest thing to shoot Quite honestly, is dialogue because you know people don't get into porn to be actors, right? So <laughs> that's hard to shoot, you know. And then I have to decide how much I actually give a shit about what I'm shooting because it's like, okay, you know, am I going to have a girl? And it's not her fault; she didn't get into porn to be an actress, right? Yeah. Am I going to have a girl that has? Sorry, I have to let my dog out. Here you go. <laughs> um, am I going to have a girl that has uh, no ability to act repeat something? 12 times hoping for a better take. Yeah. Because even or if I get a better take, it's going to be 3% better than the first one. Or just like having a girl have it. Like, I don't understand what, like, why girls have three pages of like dialogue, like this giant monologue. And you're just like, this is not going to. No, no. It's, and it's, it's the, the, the embarrassing thing sometimes just happens. Uh, Cause I, because of the way I shoot, uh, and I have to shoot a whole movie in a day, and I just want to get the fuck out as quickly as possible because I I don't enjoy this line of work. But uh, so I do everything by voiceover now. I'm like, you're gonna read this voiceover. That's gonna go over this little setup thing that I'm gonna shoot, and then every once in a while, call him daddy because you're supposed to, right? And, uh, <laughs> but I've had girls that are unable to read a voiceover, and that's always awkward because I'm like, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> 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 you got to call in a, 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 a voice actress to, to, to No, I it. literally had, and it was a, uh, it was actually something I shot for, um, kind of a vignette thing I shot for, for Wicked, and, uh, and the girl that was the star of the movie, phenomenal performer, super hot, um, and I realized, though, that she was incapable of reading copy off a page. She couldn't do it. And so I spent about an hour um, I'm like, you know, come on, let's just, you know, and I eventually I'm like, no one knows what she really sounds like in real life. I hired another girl <laughs> to come to my house to do voiceover while I was editing the movie. You know, I'm so like, smart. like oh, brilliant. Yeah. You know? And it was, and it was so much easier, but you know, and I, I, I've done that a couple of times from time to time. I've had my ex-wife like, can you just read this thing where you're like, my stepson came home from college and I couldn't believe how much he'd grown. You know, can you just read that? Because <laughs> the girl I hired, I don't know if English was not the first language or dyslexia. I don't know what the reason was, but she couldn't do it. So You're like, and I'm paying per hour on this location. Yeah, just I'm funny. paying per hour, and per hour, and I also don't want to be here to begin with. So if we could just expedite this, that'd be great, you know? Oh, God. So how many years are you having this now? 31, right? Well, I shot my first movie in 1993 Oof. and um, it was awful. Like I, I wouldn't want to watch it. And I, you know, um, I didn't know what I was doing. That was a great thing about porn. I always like, like, how did you become such a successful director? I'm not, same thing. Low bar of entry, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know Non-shaky I, 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 camera, good lighting. Right. Like I, I made, I made, I've made the joke probably a thousand times, but it's like the reason why I learned how to shoot cameras because I was a PA on a set. And the guy that was the camera guy slash director um, sort of was like a mentor to me at the time. And uh, he was older and he threw his back out. 
and he used to call me son. He used to call me son. He'd be like, son, today's the day you're going to learn how to shoot because I can't pick the fucking thing up. Now, keep in mind, back then, cameras were massive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and, mean, you're talking uh, like, like VHS like, tape cameras? Yeah. Oh. I mean, the, the beta cams, with the, the tape went in the camera. I mean, it was a yeah. massive thing to have on your shoulder. So, you know, so that's the first time I ever shot camera. And I even remember the name of the movie. It was called The Howard Sperm Show. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was 1992 and I'll never forget, you know, cause there was monitors back then and he was sitting at the monitor and he, every once in a while, he'd be like, son, you're out of focus, son, you're shooting off the set, son. And I'm like, I'm so nervous. I'm sweating. And I'm like, and the fucking thing weighs more than me. Cause at the time I weighed about 140 pounds, you know, because I was a broken, <laughs> starving musician, you know? And, uh, but I always say it's like in mainstream, you don't get to be the cameraman uh, because, you know, like the caterer doesn't get called in to be the cameraman because <laughs> even Spielberg hurt his back that day. You know, it's like, you know, I know we're working on Jurassic Park, but uh, my cameraman's down and uh, here, you know, that doesn't happen. But, Male you know, talent didn't show up. Someone's going to fuck her. I know. <laughs> the coin. And, and, and it was it was shortly after that that I started getting like phone calls from people going, uh, hey, I need a camera guy. You available this weekend? I'm like, I'm not a camera guy. Wait, am I? Yes, I'm a camera guy. Of course I'm available this weekend. And, uh, and then you moved up the bar from- I moved up that, and then I was the camera. And then I, and then I got it, I, I directed, quote unquote, my first movie in 1993. It was horrific. It was the worst thing ever. Um, but, you know, what, I mean, who cares? What was the name of that one? That, was, that one was called Cheating Hearts. I'll never forget it. And the star of that movie was a girl named Rebecca Bardot, who is now a MILF. At the time, she was- Probably the same age as me. She's probably around 23 at the time or something like that. But How long were you a lube boy until you graduated to step in camera guy? Oh, I was a lube boy for about a year and a half till I got to step oh. in camera guy. Now, yes. here's a funny story. So, uh, because I didn't want to be in porn, I was always looking for a way out, right? <laughs> so, um, at, at one point, I, um, I took, I auditioned for a... Uh, uh, job at Universal Studios, doing one of their live shows, okay. and um, and I got I actually got uh, the audition, so I was very excited about that. And I basically told everybody that I worked for, I'm like, uh, hey, I'm leaving porn. Uh, have a nice life. Uh, whatever. Goodbye. Come to find out that the only reason they were hiring people for this particular production is because the regular cast members who were part of the um, equity union were going on strike. And they just wanted to have a fucking team of scabs ready to go in case they didn't come back. So oh, like, so here I am, I quit porn, right? I'm like, ah, fuck all you people. I don't need you anymore. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to be fucking the singing fucking Frankenstein in the Beetlejuice Graveyard Review. I don't know if that impresses you or not, but it should. And uh, <laughs> and uh, after I did all that, I get a, I get a, a phone call going, uh, hey, anyway, uh, you're going to be an understudy because we made an agreement with the regular cast. And, you know, you'll still work a few times a month. I'm like, what uh, a few times a month can what is something like that pay? Well, it's thirty five dollars a show, and you'll probably do about four shows a month. I'm like, so my monthly income is now one hundred and forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add up my expenses. No, that's not going to work. So all of a sudden, I'm like, hello. I uh, know I told you to go fuck yourself last week, but uh, if you'd be willing to reconsider, <laughs> so I went through a very brief period of once again being lube boy <laughs> because that was. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. To back to the, the bottom. bottom. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, it was not, it was not a fun time for me. And then again, yeah, this last words. Fun. There's so many people in porn that have been like, "Fuck you, porn! I'm out." And then a week later, <laughs> yep. Sorry, I, I was drunk when I said that. I don't know if I, you know. And then, then there was <laughs> rent. <laughs> then I was able to go back from being lube boy again because I'm just a little bit smarter, right? So there I am, back again, holding the camera. He told us to go fuck ourselves, but he—he's pretty good. He's on time. He has clean clothes. <laughs> to be fair, I was—I'm—I mean, I'm—I'm I'm Canadian. I was very polite when I told him to go fuck himself. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, hey, thanks for the opportunity. Eh? It's just I'm moving on to do other stuff now. Eh? So uh, you know, good luck there. You know? <laughs> so yeah, Canadian, that's a Canadian fuck Canadian you. Canadian <laughs> Frankenstein at Universal. Exactly. Exactly. Oh man. Uh, anyway. The questions. Yeah, you 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 ready to, to to my questions? Absolutely. You get stuck with ten of my questions. Okay. All right. First question: What's the most annoying question people ask you? 
well, now it's just going to be awkward if I answer it <laughs> because it's, <laughs> it's how did you get into the business? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, is this same day pay? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's true. But people, people know to expect that from me. So nobody ever asks. <laughs> that's the other reason why somebody might uh, drop their rate a little bit. They're like, Okay, I'm going to be there for about 18 minutes and it's same day pay. Yeah, I'll cut, this, I'll cut my rate 100 bucks. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite way to eat a potato? Oh, I don't, uh, I don't eat potatoes. I'm trying to do that whole keto thing. That's very uh, bad. A lot of carbs in potatoes. Yes, there are. <laughs> Probably a lot of carbs in this, even though it's called skinny girl margarita. But uh, nonetheless, I have a drinking problem, so I, I ignore that part. <laughs> let me let me so let me vodka? answer yeah let me answer the question for you vodka <laughs> here's the thing about that i prefer whiskey so it didn't come right to my uh, head if you had said what's the what's your favorite thing to do in general i would have said whiskey but that's okay man after my heart yes we like yeah. the whiskey drinkers uh what would you like the title of your autobiography to be it's very simple it's the same thing that's going to be on my gravestone he just wanted to go home. <laughs> Side B. Perfect. Uh, what was the biggest turning point in your life so far? Uh, when I thought it was a good idea to move to California. <laughs> it's, it's proven to be very false, but at the time, it seemed like a good idea. It seemed brilliant. Uh, what are you most proud of? Not that. Um, <laughs> For those listening, he just pointed to his Hall of Fame trophy. <laughs> to his ABN Hall of Fame trophy. Let's... Uh, yeah, my Hall of Fame trophy. No, I guess, uh, in all seriousness, the thing I'm most proud of is that I did raise a child who's uh, not on drugs or in jail. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> what takes up too much of your time? A shooting porn takes up way too much of my time. <laughs> way too much of my time. Smell. <laughs> Huh? huh? What's your favorite smell? <laughs> Whiskey. No question. Uh, what gets you fired up? Gets me fired up. Um, sometimes politics gets me fired up, but uh, mostly what gets me fired up is when people uh, cancel at the last minute or text me and say, running a bit late, be there in five, and then they come 90 minutes later. That gets me fired up. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> I'm right around the corner. Oh, yeah. No, all the yeah, time. That yeah. happens all the time. Yeah, just getting off the exit now. It's like, was the exit blocked by a dump truck? Because I know how far the exit is. I might have been guilty of that one or two times. Yeah, maybe once or twice. <laughs> but you're older now. You've matured. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> and I did make you do... Actually, I didn't tell this story on the podcast, but I did make you do my most favorite scene ever is when you called me asking for a blowjob scene. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. That right. was my, to my, this day, my biggest diva flex ever. <laughs> it was. You're like, you have to come to my house. You can only use my boyfriend. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, fuck. All right, whatever. <laughs> I load all my shit into my car. It had to be right. like after 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, no, there's like some time, like, you know, the window is like between 10 and 10, 20. We have to be done. I'm like, ah. And he's like, fine, fair enough. And like, he drove to my house, shot me POV with my boyfriend at the time. And like, to this day, it's one of my most popular photos. Absolutely. Sure it, is. sure it is. I'm glad I could be there. In that very narrow window that you gave me to be there. I'm glad I could be there. <laughs> oh, God. What do you wish you knew more about? Uh, the stock market. Because if I did... I wouldn't be shooting uh, my stepdaughter's fucking panties or whatever the fuck movie I shot last week. That uh, Part 18. <laughs> part 18, exactly. Uh, final question. What's the one question you would want everyone you meet to answer? One question I want everyone I meet to answer? Uh, well, nowadays, I guess it would be... Uh, what gender are you? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no idea how to answer that question. Uh, what would I want anyone I meet to answer? Uh, are you in line? That might be a question. <laughs> might ask. You know? Oh, God. I got to say, one of the things, uh, when you and I first met the first time, is um, uh, your love for I Ayn Rand? Yes. So you and I share that in common. That gets, so. that gets, that gets me in some trouble sometimes, but... Uh, me too. 
I don't particularly care. Yeah, I mean, me, me neither. You do not care. Neither of you caring is not a surprise. Yeah. No, well, it's I, kind I, of I, why I wore this shirt just for you because you're the only person in porn I can wear this shirt for. Right? <laughs> it's a little bit smarter. I, I tweeted something recently where I, I I feel like I'm literally Morgan Freeman at the end of Shawshank Redemption. Now you know it's just like when they come in, his parole hearings up. They're like, "Do you feel you've been rehabilitated?" He's like, "Well, rehabilitated." That's a bullshit word. I don't know. He's like, you know, stamp your form, Sonny, and go on your way. Stop wasting my time because I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit anymore. I don't care. <laughs> I'm old. I just, my dreams used to be fame, fortune, and all the other stuff. I just want a warm fucking place to die now. That's that's my dreams now. I feel like that's no, enlightenment. Isn't that enlightenment? Isn't that enlightenment? Because I love Atlas Shrugged, then, okay, good for you. I just want a warm place to die. <laughs> Did you cross the 50 line, Mike? Are you over 50 yet? I'm 51 years old now. Yes. Okay, so th 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 that's like, I saw my, I'm, I'm going to be 54. That's a freeing moment. You cross that 50 line and it's like, I really don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm the living embodiment of everything you hate. All right, I might as well live it up. <laughs> all right, no, exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, first of all, the fact that, I mean, it's, it's strange too, because you, you, at least I feel like I'm a little bit of the state of arrest. Well, I was never a mature person to begin with, but I mean, I spend most of my days around people that are, half my age or less, right? So, you know, I get it. Like when I was, you know, 21, 22 years old, you know, my sensibilities, my philosophical sensibilities, political, uh, you know, beliefs and, and were different obviously than they are now, you know? So, um, so I have to be respectful of that. So if somebody, you know, wants to challenge me on, you know, objectivism or something, I also have to understand that they probably don't know what they're talking about. And, come talk to me again when you're 40. I mean, I'll be dead by then, but if I'm not, come talk to me again when you're 40. Or at least, or at least you know, read the book first. Don't go right, by the right, memes. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know? Don't go by the memes or the movie. <laughs> read right, the book. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah you, would, you, would, you would text it out something about, you know, whose side are you on? Um, but it, was, it was, uh, wasn't for Atlas Shrugged. Oh, it may have been some. I, I like to quote Orwell a lot too, especially now with what's going on. So it may oh, have been God, yeah. from his, you know. No, I think I, I think it was Fountainhead. Oh, the New York, Fountainhead, Fountainhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rook side or yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's no, Ellsworth Tui no, versus Ellsworth Tui or Russ. Russ yeah. yeah, you know. Um, but if you haven't read the book, then you're just like you know. I had a bunch of fucking idiots that uh, maybe they're not even idiots. They're just not informed about you know that subject that you know. We're like, did you know Ayn Rand Institute took paycheck protection money? I'm like. So, <laughs> like, you think you got me on that one? Jeez, I mean, yes, yeah, she's the virtue of selfishness, everything else, but she took a handout. Well, I mean, America took a handout because there's a fucking pandemic going on that's unprecedented. So, yeah, they have employees too and they needed to pay them. I'm so sorry, you know? And just in case you were wondering, she's been dead for like 40 years. Yeah, well, no, that was the thing. I got into it with somebody who's like, you know, uh, you know, somebody should tell her that that's very hypocritical. I'm like, I would love to. Do you know someone that could do a seance? <laughs> Because that's the only way to tell her that. <laughs> I mean, like, I if you like, don't know she's dead, you don't get to have an opinion on on her. You know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, oh my god! I the, love it. Side anyway. note: She's halfway through Atlas Shrugged. Yeah, at this don't point. be away yet. I'm not done with it yet. <laughs> well, it's a fucking. You won't be done with it until 2022. So I'm not. <laughs> Every time I fall asleep, I'm trying. I know. Yeah. Don't and don't watch the fucking horrible movie they made. Uh, oh God, it was awful. No, it was awful. awful. Don't awful. don't watch well, the, the, the the Atlas Shrug. The, the, and I always tell it. The, the thing about Atlas Shrug is, is when you get to the end and you get to the speech. Yeah. No one really reads the speech. You kind of no, skim no, the no. speech. The speech is is literally like a hundred and something pages long. It's crazy how long the speech is. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's an important speech, but uh, you can yeah. you can skip to the highlights if you want. You know. SM scene. Just make the girl sit there and read the speech. Right. Well, no, that would be I'm doing it for my OnlyFans. <laughs> but there's out, like out. in uh, in 1984, there's a book within a book. The book is called "The Theory and Practice of Oligarchical Collectivism." Yes. Don't if you read that book. It's an important book to read. You can skip that part. You just you don't need to read that part. <laughs> you know? that. You'll still get my fist. That was the, the quote here that um, it's obvious now is like they won't lift their heads up from their screens long enough to realize their freedoms are being taken away. Well, that's. That's Look around. <laughs> Look around. I love that we went from Lou Boy to like Ann Rand convos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so anyway, I was uh, handing this girl a baby wipe because she had jizz in her eye. And uh, did you know that uh, Atlas Shrugged, the speech that uh, John Galt gives is, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, have one more, I have one more question for you before of we go. Of course. Are you going to start an OnlyFans? And if the answer is no, will you? Because <laughs> I will sign up. <laughs> 
I, I listen. I mean, look, could, could I use a little extra money? Yes, I can. <laughs> but I have this uh, terrible fear that if I started an OnlyFans, a I'll look like a pandering fool because I sometimes make fun of people that all they do is promote their OnlyFans, right? <laughs> And so here I am going, uh, hey, uh, I know the world's falling apart. Oh, that building collapsed and all those children died. Join my OnlyFans. <laughs> you know? um, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But the other thing is I'm afraid to be quite honestly, because even though it might be kind of funny to um, have like, you know, just behind the scenes stuff or stuff that happens on set, if like 12 people join it, I'll be, I'll just, myself seems already low enough as it is. Do I really need to have it reinforced by the lack of interest in my OnlyFans? I don't know. <laughs> I, I have a strange feeling you would have a lot more I, yeah. fans than you realize in many in the industry. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Maybe so. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I, did, I think I did sign up for an account once when I was very <laughs> intoxicated, but I've not done anything with it. So. Yes. You know, the last time I, the last time you and I met, uh, Joanna was going to, you know, handle your Instagram. Maybe I need to talk to her about handling your OnlyFans now, too. Right. I'll go in on this. There. It'll be me and Joanna back-ending, messaging everyone for you on your OnlyFans. I know, I should just give Johnny Castle a call. Hey, buddy, uh, I don't know if you want to <laughs> pretend to be me, but uh, let me tell you a few things about myself. I'm often bitter, drunk, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, verbally abusive. If you can pull that off, you can run my OnlyFans. <laughs> they might actually enjoy that, finally be able to say what they want. <laughs> true. It's very true. All right, so we're at that point where we're plugging things shamelessly. What do you want to plug, Mike? <laughs> I, got, I got nothing to plug. I got nothing to plug at all. Do you have a wish list? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're watching my movies for free on Pornhub, uh, give it a like. <laughs> Because apparently I can pay my mortgage with those. All right, then. <laughs> Maybe you should start a Patreon if you're watching my oh movies for free. Oh, my <laughs> Just know when you're watching my movies for free that uh, I am buying uh, uh, lesser and lesser brands of alcohol to n dull the pain of my existence. So, Because you're taking money out of my pocket, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to promote my OnlyFans. It's dailybush.com, and that's all I'm promoting this episode. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm going to promote Mike's Twitter. Just go to follow Mike Quasar on Twitter yes. because it's worth every minute of it. Make some popcorn, pour a whiskey, and just and, read and, and, and buy my book. There, Actually, you made my book. I did? <laughs> Wait for the corn, lessons learned from being married to a porn star, but I actually quote you in it, so I have to send you a copy. <laughs> Wow, I'd love to see it. That's amazing. Yeah, I actually, I, one, of my, one of my favorite tweets you did was something about being a director. You know, AVN should give me an award for a guy who can direct a step scene with two people who aren't but three years apart for like 12 grand. Or something. <laughs> I, quote, I said this, I said this, if anybody wants to know what step porn is like, let me quote Mike Quasar. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I've been like, you know, okay, so she's playing your stepmom. <laughs> But I'm older than her. Shut up. She's your stepmom. It can happen. <laughs> <laughs> no? And perfect, though. It's absolutely oh, perfect. And, yeah. and then if you want to, um, I believe on your Instagram, we have bedtime stories. Oh, yeah, I do. I do have those. I do. I, I, I need to go on. I always say about Instagram. Instagram is like the baby you left in the car when you did your afternoon shift at the strip club. Every once in a while, you have to check on it. That's how Instagram <laughs> is to me. <laughs> you know? Like... Every week or so, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, I have an Instagram. I uh, should check on that. But, yeah, I did, I did put my, uh, my bedtime stories on there when I read aloud from uh, some of my more idiotic scripts during the whole shutdown thing because I couldn't actually shoot porn. So <laughs> they, so they were good. hysterical. They were so good. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's another, another fine episode in the can. We covered a lot of ground today. I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, listen, there are very few times you can go from Orwell and Ayn Rand to Jizz Mopper. So there you go. Exactly. Hey, I never <laughs> I never mopped Jizz just for anybody out there. I no, new, out new boy. Only the best. <laughs> yes. Somebody below me mopped the Jizz. Just there's so you always know. there's always somebody, there's like always assistant <laughs> crack whore. There's there's always somebody down below you. <laughs> no, my favorite comedian, uh, Norm McDonald, he did it on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. He's like, there's a worse job than crack whore. Assistant crack whore. <laughs> and then, then the next year he came out and he was like, crack whore trainee was below <laughs> assistant crack whore. It was like, oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah.
Oh my god. Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, thank you, Mike, for coming on. It was a blast. It's good to <laughs> I see love you. you. I hope I see you soon in person. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>